welcome back to Ronnie Lee again, giving his uh, half century of organizing, expertise, tips, spatulas, and all things how to organize <laughs> your own group, including personalities and how that works, and lots more. And today we're going to be talking about slightly more complicated actions and how to organize them. Over to you, Ronnie. It's an absolute pleasure to see you again. Right, well, yeah, lovely to see you again, Pamela. What I kind of really um, refer to it as was kind of ongoing actions you've done your first action um you've got some people together even there's only two of you you've got enough people together to do things that are like kind of a, a little bit more complicated but there's no reason not to kind of um still do less complicated thing small group of people could still do door dropping probably more fun with a few people um another important thing about door dropping i didn't mention before is maps have, have, have maps of the area that you Kind of cover and mark the streets off so you know where you're going leafleting as well you can do some in your town center as a, as, a, as as a group um perhaps dress up in animal costumes or or, or, or do something that's going to kind of be attractive to people if you another very good tip leafleting if you want people to take the leaflets i mean we say for instance you've got a, a local vegan fair going on you may not have organized the fair somebody else might have organized it you want to promote it if you're giving out leaflets in your town center uh, to promote that wear a high vis jacket if you're giving out leaflets and you want people to take the leaflets or you want there to be more chance people taking the leaflets wear a high vis jacket it makes you look official and somehow you know pe people oh, think that oh. your, your leaflets have more validity than if you kind of are just dressed in ordinary clothes i wonder so, how you have those high vis jackets on on your facebook page you all have yeah we have two different sorts of high vis jackets we have we have high vis jackets for doing the stall we've got green green kind of the green they're not massively high vis because they're kind of dark green but they're like distinguish us as a group and it kind of makes it look a, you know a bit better and a bit a bit more kind of professional uh, and it gives a good impression um got those but for but for kind of if we're giving out leaflets in the street we, we wear the yellow ones we wear the yellow brighter ones you know the ones that you know you, you see people wear all the time so we've got two different sorts of high vis the other thing that you can do with with uh, uh, a, a group of people even a small group is, 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 is street events um and, and there's all sorts of things you can do in the street i mean you can do a street stall for the petition what you've got to do is have something that's going to attract people to the stall because i was kind of look at the main objective of a stall is to is to be able to give people information about ethical veganism you know i want people to know what happens to the animals i want people to be vegan you know be, be properly vegan in other words vegan uh, you know for the animals i want them to know about that i don't want them to just come up and say well that was you know a, a nice a, a nice bit of vegan cheese i might buy that and and that's all they think about i want people to get the proper information and the same if you you know the, the same if you're doing anything you're doing a petition to attract people to you know these things are attractants to get people so you can give the information to them but people have got to have a reason to come to the stall and so like i said in the uh previous episode when we started our group the first thing we did my wife and i we did a stall um inviting people to sign a petition against the badger call and you know a lot of people love badgers and are against the cull and you know a lot of people came and signed a petition and then everyone that signed the petition got given a um a booklet about veganism and got given leaflets from from adam laid about the connection between the badger cull and the dairy industry and why a good way of opposing the badger cull is to go vegan which is the same with the food really um yeah it's, it, it's great to get people into you know wanting to try plant food cheese or you know milk or you know plant milk or whatever but kind of always have, have, have leaflets always have information to give them that you know includes um the ethics of veganism and occasionally we'll organize street collections you've got to get permit from the local authority to do that you could do a street collection on behalf of a you know local rescue or in connection with street collection you can set up a stall and, and once again the people come up then you can give them you can give them information about veganism and that's what some groups do they do they, they kind of do street you know uh, video video displays you have like i mean obviously the groups like um <coughs> anonymous for the voices cuba truth you know they're doing you know they have like whole computers with video displays um but you don't need to be 
in part of AV to to do that. You know, you can get a um, a television um, screen and uh, and stuff and 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 have a video display and give out leaflets in connection with that. And it, it's kind of really interesting that um, <coughs> Joey Joey Carbstrong has got something on his website that I just saw the other day, um, and it's called Stands Stands for Change. That stands and then the number four and change and where he's talk where he's talking about this he's talk he's, he's giving people ideas where they can get the televisions and what they can do and it's actually quite kind of it's actually quite you know quite practical stuff and the the, the other place you can hold stalls would be at events in various events like for instance animal rescue fun fundraise pretty dog rescues where they have things like fun dog shows in the park um where, where you could have a store you maybe have to pay about 15 or 20 quid for the store but it's it's worthwhile doing that um and obviously what you're doing is you've got people there that care about one sort of animal <laughs> trying to get them to extend their circle of compassion uh, animal aid do a very good leaflet um what why love one and eat the other um i think it's called um that, that does that that gets people to try and make that connection um, and you've mentioned you know, that a couple of times, and and, yeah. flyers, and and you and they get, basically give out you know free flyers if you're you get it free, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're very good. They're very good for that kind of animal rescue yeah. event, you yeah. know, to get people make make the connection that these other animals that they're eating, you know, are just as as just as wonderful as the <laughs> as the you know the dogs and cats that they kind of you know pour their affection on. The other thing is like. Uh, eco events anything to, to do with the environment because of course there's a huge environmental advantage in in people going vegan or at least you know consuming you know consuming a vegan diet they're probably very happy to have someone with a stall that's promoting you know vegan um you know, vegan eating for instance and so you've kind of got you can do stalls at local environmental events mm-hmm. health events as well there's a big health aspect to veganism and certainly i suppose it depends what sort of vegan you are i mean I don't think junk food veganism is particularly healthy. I mean, it's obviously better for the animals, but for the people consuming the food, it's not particularly healthy. But, you know, th- there's still a big health aspect to, to, to veganism. And so um, that gives you an inroad into health events. Say we want to hold an event promoting healthy eating. And, um, you know, you, you have a stall at those events. Once, once again, you may have to pay a fee for the stall, but it's not going to be a massive amount usually carnivals local carnivals um they they generally have as well as the carnival going through the street they normally have like a kind of carnival field where they have lots of stalls where the carnival starts from the carnival ends up and you could do stalls that there sometimes it can be you know pretty expensive to have a stall at an event like that but a lot of times it's not you know and it just depends have a look into it see what they're charging and community events as well i mean for instance there's that we have a, a local woman who's very into um kind of helping local charities and she organizes a charity christmas fair every year it's a charity that provides um babies clothing for you know you know poorer families and we did stall at that event Basically, Stalls. The idea of keeping an eye on what's happening in your local area yeah. you know seeing yeah. organizing little things and then just contacting the organizer and saying this is us you know would you like us to have a stall and they say yes and it's 15 quid and you say okay yeah. can you do us a yeah. discount you know or can we be free because we're very small or whatever yeah yeah i mean i mean have a look on have a look on in your, in your local paper have a look on mm-hmm. um you know keep your eye on social media kind of get to know your local organizations that might be holding these sort of events and, and, and you keep a regular eye on their they mostly have facebook pages keep a regular eye on that for their events and see what's coming up and then contact them and kind of once that what we find now that once we start doing these events they actually contact us and they say yeah. oh, we've got this other event coming up do you want because they want they want stall holders because you know yeah. part of the yeah. the revenue comes from the the fees for the stalls and so we kind of do that and uh, the other the other thing you can do is you can organize your own events maybe you organize film shows uh we did a film show a film called the last pig and this was this guy who was an organic film uh, pig farmer and he ended up becoming vegan and started a vegetable farm instead because he could no longer um cope with the fact that he was taking animals taking pigs that he got to know um very well to the slaughterhouse we got a load of leaflets printed and we we door dropped them you know all around the local area 
and we put on some food and we had like we had about 50 people come along you know vegan food with it and people came to watch the film and we gave them information did you, um, did you charge for entrance or where did no, the food come no we didn't charge um um we we got a grant from veg fund for it and that's something i can talk about later because yeah. you know later on we talk about funding because some of these things cost money and obviously groups will need will need funding to some extent and that's something i'll cover you know i'll, I'll talk about a bit later and the other thing that you can do put on a vegan fair I mean, vegan fair doesn't have to be like a huge pitch fest type thing. You can hold a vegan fair in a, uh, in, a in a community center. If you've got some local sort of vegan traders around, you know, get them to come along and, and, and do stalls and have an outreach stall and have, you know, food samples. Maybe have someone doing a cookery cookery demonstration. We, we have people that do, you know, cookery demos, um, and then create leaflets and you know, leaflet door drop the local area. Mini mini vegan fairs really. I mean, you could try a big one at your local town hall. It's a lot of organising, and I think <coughs> probably if a group's just started, it's probably too much. Um, but small affairs are, are, are something that's manageable just with a, a, a small number of people. The places we do stores is to do stores at local libraries. We did a couple of library stores last the January. And once you kind of get friendly with the library, they'll let you do stalls. You can do stalls there throughout the year. A lot of libraries have a space where you can you can do, you can do a stall in the library. This speaks to what you were saying uh, at the beginning about like building relationships, really, and about being yeah. local, and then about yes. sort of, like getting known by the sort of like the you know the other organisers, not the vegan mm. organisers, but the event organisers or, or entities within your local community. And once they've seen that you know you're sort of like reasonable people, and you you know you turn up and you've got something that is of value to the community, then you've kind of got an entree and like repeated, mm. as it were, business. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing. Another thing, what what kind of happens with a lot of vegan outreach is it's going to hit and run. Mm. You know, those people mm. go, they go in a town in, in a city. <coughs> city centre, a lot of them aren't from that city. They all come, come do the thing, right? Give it two, three, this. There we go, gone. There's no um, interaction with the local community. There's no, you know, community involvement. Whereas what I'm talking about is a group that's embedded in the local community, that's kind of part of the local community and that interacts with other groups in the local community. Um, those other groups um, may not be vegan, but they're still sort of kind of worthy. And, and of course, by interacting with them, you know people in those groups um could become big and in, in, in fact we it, it was interesting we did we just still we, we have a thing locally called a volunteers fair which is this fair for voluntary groups where uh all the vo local voluntary groups have stalls and you know members of the public can come and look around and see what group appeals to them and who they'd like to get involved with and i was really surprised at the number of people who running the other stalls at this event that there were things like for instance um, for a local hospice, um, you know, it's a local wildlife organisation. I was really surprised at how many of those people are actually vegan when I spoke to them, you know. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. You kind of become part of, the, part, of the, part of a local community. And it's a different way of looking at it. It's a different way of operating rather than just go to the town centre and you just do the thing and you're gone. But it's like you're much more trying to kind of go deeper down deeper yeah. in, in yeah. into the grassroots of, 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 of somewhere and, and making these connections and, and having these positive re relationships with other groups we help our local environment groups you know local friends of the earth our local extension rebellion a local transition we're kind of involved with those groups we help them with their events we kind of reap the reward of that i mean first of all there are people within those groups that are kind of have kind of gone vegan or they've gone in that direction because of like our influence and and secondly open stores to have stores at their events you see so it's it's, it's like kind of a win-win situation and plus what they're campaigning for is is worthy as well you know like environmental groups i mean it's it's, it's really important to protect the environment for the sake of um of, of animals in fact any any kind of environmental degradation you know any any harm done to the environment whether it's you know the, the, the climate emergency or pollution or whatever um the, the, the main victims for adverse in, environmental impact um, aren't humans, it's wildlife. So it's very much an animal liberation issue to protect the environment. And so you kind of, you know, it's important to be in, involved with those causes anyway. The thing is, um, supermarkets, uh, we um, we do, or well, we did, I mean, it's, it's 
been stopped because of COVID this year, but um, last year we did four stalls at uh, one of our local Tesco's in the foyer and it was promoting their vegan products. So they kind of saw it as a benefit to them. We're promoting their vegan cheeses and their plant milks, their vegan chocolate, but it was an advantage you know, for us or an advantage for veganism as well, because once again, we were giving people information about ethical veganism as well as recipes and stuff like that another local group in our county uh, does it at their local waitrose not not all supermarkets will allow it um i know tesco does on waitrose or certain of them would allow it and maybe some others as well it may even be possible to do stalls in indoor shopping malls um when i was involved in uh, a group in that my nearest city um, is Wolverhampton. And I started off, when I started off in doing vegan average, I got involved with the group in Wolverhampton. And one of the things we did, we did stalls, there's two big shopping malls, indoor shopping malls there. And we did stalls in both those shopping malls and contacted the, you know, the person that runs the mall and said, you know, would it be, you know, how would you feel about us doing uh, like a stall about healthy eating in your shopping mall? And they said, oh, fine. Yeah, yeah, we're absolutely fine about that. And we did, great big stalls in the shopping mall and but of course <coughs> that was our inn was the healthy eating you know and, and but once we were in there once you're in there you can give people leaflets about you know as i said about the ethical aspects and there may be other things i mean i mean the kind of opportunities re really are, are, are endless but, but i think uh, that's what you've given us is an absolute fantastic selection of um potential opportunities that you know the the new group that's got a few organizers or a few more it's got in it's sort of like it's done its basic sort of like activism and it's looking to sort of like expand its activism i think you've given some amazing ideas you know and it, it makes it feel like there's like loads of opportunities to sort of go out there and you know do stuff and and embed yourself within the local community you also mentioned that you know we'll do another we're going to do another video on funding and probably equipment as well but yes yeah. for tonight my cats need to be fed and it's been <laughs> an absolute pleasure again to hear decades of experience and you know like all these ideas and the trojan horse idea which seems to be sort of um key to your mm. approach and also yes. this thing of, you know, if somebody cares about dogs or any other kind of animals, you know, that is, again, building some sort of like common ground, as it were, you know, and to go in there and sort of like, oh, you care about dogs rather than, you know, you can't call yourself an animal lover and not be a vegan. sort of. You don't frighten people away. And I think the other thing um, in building bridges with other groups is kind of become involved in their activities. I mean, we, we kind of do things like we'll become involved in litter picking. We go a big local kind of litter picking group. It's very popular uh, and we kind of help out with their list a bit sometimes you know we'll help them and, you know we'll, we'll kind of help promote you know if our local friends of the earth has a store we'll uh, some of our people will go along and help them you know and all that builds bridges you know and builds you know kind of builds this you know like community aspect and kind of also once again as i said before that it makes it easier to kind of they'll let us know about events you know let's say they that they found out an event where they're doing a stall. They say, oh, you know, we're, we're doing a stall at this event. You know, how about you You do a stall as well? And, you know, there's all that. It, there's a huge advantages from making those connections. That's, that's really inspiring. I feel like this is sort of like giving me my sort of like, you know, my second wind of activism <laughs> and Joe, um, because I was feeling a bit glum about it. But you're making it sound kind of quite attractive, actually. One thing I forgot to mention, it's, it's, it, it's, it's kind of very important as well, is we've also done stalls at schools. Um, which we kind of heard about through our uh, sort of involvement in the local, you know, green movement. And it seems to be an increasing number of schools are doing this kind of eco events where they're encouraging the children to, you know, learn about being more eco friendly and that kind of thing. And we've done stores at a number of those. Uh, and it's normally in the week at the end of the school day when the parents, this is prime, you know, primary schools, parents come to collect the children, but they're encouraged to stay a while and attend this event where there's all these different stalls about environmental stuff it could be that you know grow your own you know grow your own vegetables and some of the children have grown some stuff from seeds that they display on a stall um and you know the local wildlife groups and, and things like that and we've had stalls at those events and we've been given food samples and been hugely hugely popular hugely popular with um with young families that's that's another great idea and the thing is that that also would link into the other talk that we did the other video 
ages ago about the prevent strategy and how sort of yes. people are being flagged up as potential terrorists. But that's for another that's right. Quite rightly, I mean, actually getting into a, into a primary school these days is like, it's actually easier to get into a prison uh, <laughs> because you have to go through many, they kind of look at you to make sure you don't look like Rolf Harris or Jimmy Savile to start with. And, and then they got, you've got to fill in the form and do stuff like that. And then you have to allow yourself like an extra 15 minutes to actually get into the building. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's well worth it. It's, it's well worth doing those. But that, that has come through our involvement with other groups. So the message is Trojan horse and serious networking and actually getting your hands dirty and helping out other groups. And then yes. like that, that builds a sort of, um, well, community really. Yeah. And when we've done stuff like tree planting, being involved in local tree planting, and that's great because I mean, that helps animals as well. It, you know, improves their habitat and everything, you know, it, uh, it you know, combats the climate crisis, which is already kind of wiping out, wildlife in their millions you know so th th these are all sort of animal liberation things that we it's st still along the same theme by being involved in those things you do kind of it it does give greater opportunities to, to spread the vegan message fantastic well on that happy note of positive optimism and uh, can do -ness, thank you again for your time ronnie lee it's been an absolute pleasure again uh, future videos will include uh, fundraising and equipment and possibly other stuff and more encouragement of what we can do. Is there any last words that you would like to have? I'd just say that uh, kind of, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult to do outreach. It's kind of the easiest thing in the world. And, and kind of don't, you know, I don't want people to think that it's like this massively complicated thing that takes a, a huge amount of organising. I mean, certainly, you know, some, some things, you know, need a lot of organising. But, you know, putting it through leaflets through a letter box or giving leaflets out in the street or, or putting them inside books in the library or leaving them in a waiting room that doesn't need that's not complicated anyone could do that and, and i'd urge all vegans to do that you know get some get some get some leaflets and whenever you've got the opportunity just leave them somewhere i mean i know know really quite a large number of people who become vegan because they picked up a leaflet so it does work you know and it's it's easy you don't have to you know even if that's all you can do and still do it if, if, if all vegans did that just think of how much more the message would be would be spread brilliant thanks again ronnie for your precious time and your your knowledge and everything else it's been a pleasure and my cat <laughs>